Another newly noted podcast comes to you from the Coach's Podcast Room at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill in Celebration Point. Okay, and welcome into another duly noted podcast presented by Titan MRI, our good friends over there, and it comes to you from the Melvin Law, Dooley Dome, Gator Studios. Uh, great show today. Chris Leak is going to join us. Always love talking to Chris, and we'll talk to him about all the stuff that that went on, uh, and, and you know, when he was the, the uh, quarterback, and, and of course, probably doesn't get enough credit for all the stuff he did. I mean, he is an all-time leading passer in Florida history, which is pretty good considering the quarterbacks that came to her. Although I will say this, playing four years helped, and of course playing the bowl games helped as well. So Chris will join us in just a minute um, after we do our first segment, and then Coach Spur will be back Monday, and we'll talk to him about all the stuff he did up in New York. And, um, and then on Thursday of next week, uh, Drew Copeland's going to join us, and we'll talk about the um, picks that we always do. He owes me lunch, so maybe he'll have it Ubered to my house. I don't know. <laughs> you can't owe a guy a lunch for an entire year, right? Oh, I'm going to give him so much crap about that. But we're going to pick 11 games, I think it is. I've got them all written down here. All the SEC games plus the uh, – Playoff games, and I think there's a Miami game thrown in there. So anyway, we got 11 games. We're going to pick winner take all. Not always gets all. The winner doesn't always get all, but uh, hopefully we will. So that'll be our shows coming up. And again, Christmas Day, obviously, we're not going to have a show. Um, New Year's, we're trying to figure out what we're going to do. We're probably going to do a show that will be released Monday morning very early. And then... Um, that way, if you really want to watch and, and see what I'm thinking about the playoff games and everything, because they they start at, what, five or so? So uh, you'll be able to watch that. Um, all right, let's get to our process service of Gainesville starting five. Well, we appreciate process service of Gainesville and the great folks over there, and Scott Hart does a terrific job. Number one, to me, the biggest story of the week right now as we sit here today is the – SEC schedule was, re was released, although I don't know that it required a two-hour um, show. But again, it's a big deal. SEC is about to move over to ESPN, so it was shown on ESPN and it was shown on the SEC network. And here's how dumb I am, okay? I am literally one of the dumbest people alive. I was convinced Florida was playing basketball last night. They're playing tonight. So I was convinced they were playing. I'm like, why is this game not on? I could not find it. Couldn't find it. Why are they showing this on two channels? Oh, I'm sorry. The game is tomorrow night. <laughs> anyway, so the schedule did come out. And uh, all what I, what I took away from it, because we already knew who was playing. Everybody who was playing is in when you finally got to see it stretched end to end. And that, to me, was the big thing where I went. What, and the biggest thing you took away from it, I would think, was how tough everybody's schedule is. Everybody has a hard schedule. Nobody got off light here, okay? Everybody's got a difficult schedule. Florida is, is one of the most difficult, mainly because of who they play in the non-conference, because that's the other thing. I looked at a lot of these schedules and went, man, they have a soft non-conference schedule. And... um they still haven't learned that lesson. And, and you know, that may – look, if Georgia had played Clemson last year, let's just say they had played Oklahoma, which was originally scheduled, which everybody keeps trying to explain why they had to cancel the game. Nobody can make a, a good explanation of it, though. Uh, but who cares? Um, but let's say they had that win there. They probably get in the playoffs. Um, that would have really been a dilemma. But the, the, it's, it's a moot point. It's not something the committee even had to worry about. Uh, but they played, as you know, almost nobody in the non-conference. Georgia Tech was their one game. Um, but that's why Florida's schedule is the is so tough. Is because they play Miami. Now I know Miami's seven and five, and there was a lot of things I uh, we didn't see a whole lot from Miami that scares anybody. And I, I I admit I talked about that a lot about how the schedule isn't that hard. 
But then I saw it laid out end to end, and it does occur because, of course, it ends with FSU, and you don't know how good UCF is going to be next year. They were very up and down this year. Program has not been quite the same with Mel's on as it was with Scott Frost, um, but they're still good, and they're still, and it, you know, the schedule is not easy, but nobody's is. That's the best part of it. Nobody has an easy schedule. Um, and that's what makes – I don't mind – and I, I've said this before, guys. If you're good enough, the schedule doesn't matter. Because I remember in 96, Florida was going to play – this was the year they play at Tennessee and at FSU. And at the time, that was it. Tennessee and FSU were the whole season. I mean, Georgia always wanted to beat Georgia, but they were beating Georgia all the time. In fact, they hadn't lost to them under Spurrier at that point. They lost the next year. Um, but that those were the games that mattered. Those were the games that counted. And and so when you saw both of them were on the road, you go, hey, they aren't going to win it all this year. And they did. They did still win it all. All right, let's get to number two, and that is that the schedule reveal did show us, and this is what we did find out because they put everything in order, that it's going to be a rough November, man. It is – I don't know anybody's got anything that looks like this in November. Um just for those of you who, yeah, I, mean, I, I the, the season basically starts November 1st for Florida. And I know that um, there are a lot of big games before that. There are a lot of tough games before that. Miami, Texas, A&M, um, who else? Tennessee is, is still on the schedule before that. But when you get to this November, it's brutal, brutal. At Texas, no, I'm sorry, let's start off with Georgia. In November instead of late October, which usually it is in late October. But you start with Georgia on November 2nd. Then you go at Texas. You know, I don't know how good they're going to be this year, but they're going to be pretty good. Um, they're killing it, recruiting and portal and everything. Then you get LSU at home. Then you get Ole Miss at home. I don't know if you know or not, but they're both playing uh, in big bowl games this year, big boy bowl games. And then you close with FSU. So because we got away from the uh, the divisions, Florida now has no Vandy, no Missouri on the schedule. And but we knew that coming in. I don't I'm not gonna miss Missouri. <laughs> um so we knew the schedule. This was just the reveal of what it what it's gonna look like in terms of laying it out. Um and then as I said earlier. I said it three times, so I should probably not say it anymore. Let's get to our third thing on the process service of Gainesville starting five. And that is the whole uh, thing with the quarterback, Langway, from uh, Texas that is becoming this national story even when it's not a story. And it was interesting because I don't even know where the story came from. It's like the Ogeron story, that apparently Ogeron followed a former or a current Florida player and they, everybody assumed he's coming to Florida, and the truth is he, he isn't, and, and that was never a possibility. I, I, But, again, that may be a, another Internet-created story. I don't know. All I know is this lagway thing has had taken on some life, and I know that Florida very smartly uh, had many of their players, their incoming freshmen, including lagway, put one more week Tom Gator up, uh, you know, on social media and let people know that they're still committed. Now, look, I, it, it, it is a lot of crap what's going on out there. And a lot of this stuff is generated by opposing teams or, or at the very least opposing fans of teams. But opposing teams do it, too. All these people that are being hired to be part of recruiting, they're not just trying to look good and, and serve butter, you know, with the bread. They're doing things. In fact, um, one thing that I thought was, I, I forgot to mention this, we were talking about the reveal. And this is one of the things Florida did. And again, there's nothing wrong with anything that they're doing here. I'm, I'm just saying, everybody's looking for an angle to try to be better. But what Florida did with when they did the reveal was they took their most famous alumni, basically, not their most famous, because Emmett would be one, but he doesn't really do much in Florida. Um, and revealed it one by one, starting with Spurrier, of course, 
Jesse Palmer, Stephen Root, one of my favorite actors. Love that guy. In fact, I'll, I guess I, can I tell that story about Stephen Root? When I saw him at the Petty concert and he's walking down below and I just, I was like, Stephen Root! And people are looking at me like, who the hell is Stephen Root? Well, he went to Florida and he's a cool dude and he's in a gr lot of great movies and mo many of you know him. Anyway, I wish I'd said something else and it would have been the motto that is up there on dodgeball and you know what it is. That's all I need to say. But that was so cool. It was Jesse Palmer. It was uh, Stephanie Abrams. Um, Daryl Hammond from Saturday Night Live, all these great people. And I think Florida doesn't always do enough with that. I think they need to know more about, do more with uh, some of the famous people they have. But, and, hey, look, nobody's asked me anything. <laughs> all right, number four on the process service of Gainesville starting five. Uh, tonight is basketball, and Florida will be playing East Carolina. A lot of you already know the score of this game or who are listening to this. It's part of what uh, Florida is trying to do. And Todd Golden believes, and we talked about this before, especially with Chris Harry last week, about playing games in a lot of different places. And they've got one. This one is in Lakeland tonight. And then, of course, Tuesday, I think it is. You don't trust me because I've screwed up already. They got Michigan in um, Charlotte. So, a lot of travel for these guys and a lot of bonding. And a lot of times it can really come in handy. And I, like Chris was talking about last week, the bottom line is a neutral site win over number 70 or 80 or 100 or 99 or 47 is a lot better than a home win over those teams. They, home wins don't do you a lot of good against low net ranking teams. So um, we'll see how all that goes going forward. With Florida, and I'll, again, obviously on Monday show, we'll talk a lot more about how they played in that in this game, but Thursday night. So East Carolina, I East Carolina has uh, some big guys, but they're not as tall as Florida, and their record is not great. They've lost. I think they lost to somebody the other. Oh, they lost to um, gosh, who was it? anyway? They lost somebody that I didn't think is very good team. There, so there you have it. All that great insight that Pat Dooley always brings on another Dooley Noted podcast. Let's move on to number five on the process service of Gainesville starting five. Uh, and that is all the stuff that's going on in the portal. I'm not going to go into detail on a lot of it. Caleb Douglas ended up at Texas Tech. I hate to see him leave. Really good player. Um, I think he could have been great here. Um, he's going to a place where they throw the ball a lot. but. I mean, that, that injury just took him out of it and allowed other people. And he's he also sees a little bit of the handwriting on the wall, wall. We also had this. Malik Murphy from Texas decides he's going to turn, he's going to get in the portal because he wants to play next year. And he wants to get go ahead and get it started now. He doesn't want to wait and be the backup to Quinn Ewers in the playoffs. Now, you can't say you're a Longhorn for life. Buddy, you wouldn't even stick around for a chance to win a national title. If that doesn't say everything you need to know about today's players and especially today's quarterbacks, that that is the thing right there, right? To me, that puts it all in a nutshell. Well, I could stick around and try to win a national title, or I could go ahead and get in the portal and get to work on where I'm going next. And, you know, it'll probably only be my, oh, I don't know. Second stop. I may do seven or eight before it's over. Uh, we did see also Tyler Van Dyke, who I really thought was going to be a good quarterback. I was wrong about. Uh, and, of course, he was beaten out by the other the freshman that they have. And I guess that he knows he's not going to be the quarterback next year. So he's transferred to Wisconsin. Wisconsin seems to be in the middle of all the portal all the time. Going, they're coming and going from Wisconsin. So there's a little bit of news for you, but we don't want to get into too much detail because it'll change every minute of every day. We'll see what happens next. That's going to do it for our process service of Gainesville starting five. We'll take a break. And when we come back, the great Chris Leak will join us, the MVP of the 2006 national title game, the all-time leading passer at the University of Florida, the SEC freshman of the year, the number one recruit in the state. What hell? He did it all, man. He did it all. 
and we appreciate him. He's a good, good dude. All right, we'll be back with more here on another Duly Noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Melden Law Duly Dome Gator Studios. Process Service of Gainesville offers a rapid turnaround on affidavits of service for Gator lawyers locally and nationwide. Our friend Scott Hart offers immediate responses on status requests and is a member of NAPS and FATS. And he has been a part of the community for almost two decades. Need service? Call Process Service of Gainesville at 407 697 9592 or email shartgators, that's G A T R, at yahoo.com. And make sure you ask about the paralegal legal secretary bonus program. Things have certainly got a little out of hand lately when it comes to just buying our everyday necessities. Just look at gas, streaming services, and heck, even chicken wings. Well, there is one necessity that shouldn't cost a ton. Taking care of yourself and helping fix all the aches and pains in life, and the fine folks at Titan MRI agree. With costs a fraction of what you'd pay at a hospital, you'll not only save money, you'll be taken care of by staff with over 20 years experience. So when you need an MRI, call Titan first, and you can go where your doctors send their families. Now offering CAT scans. I was driving behind a lady, and very suddenly she moved out of the way. There was a log laying in the road. And when I hit my brakes, I went on top of the log. I had two herniated discs. I just haven't been the same since. Jeffrey Melton fought for me all the way. Him and his team really went there for me. Throughout the whole lawsuit, he made sure that my bills was paid. It was never no whenever I called him and asked him for something. Call Melden Law right now. Okay, and welcome back to another Duly Noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Melden Law Duly Dome Gator Studios today. And it's a great pleasure to bring on our Big Mills Cheesesteak Zoom line, one of the greatest skaters to ever play the game. All he ever did was stow for more yards than anybody in the history and get the MVP of a national title game. Small achievements for Chris Lee, but it's great to have him on the show. Chris, how you been, buddy? Awesome. Uh, just enjoying this uh, beautiful winter weather in florida right now so yeah i'm uh, I'm, enjoy, I'm enjoying the enjoying the football season still going on so it's so it's uh, it's been really good yeah this we only have a three-day winter so this only had the third day of it and it will be yeah. <laughs> it's so it's like yeah I, I was outside and i was like freezing i go god i'm so cold i gotta go put a jacket on it and i looked at the temperature and it was like 63 and i'm like <laughs> <laughs> you're such a wimp but you yeah. get your blood i mean when you lived in charlotte i mean you probably yeah. won some winners there you know well well, well, you, well i lived in canada for in montreal for three years that that really taught me what real winter was so yeah I, I'm, I'm really grateful for the florida winners now <laughs> more than that, more than now yeah absolutely and of course uh chris great player at florida played in several leagues um nfl cfl and all that and now yeah. is the airstrike passing academy down you're in orlando right yep based in orlando i, I cover 22 counties now so a wide wide range of uh, quarterbacks uh being taught right now yeah so what do you exactly when what is the when you get into the airstrike academy what is your uh what is your plan there as, as a well, quarterback well, I take I take uh, you know usually young quarterbacks, youth, middle school, high school, a few college guys. I have worked with Kirk Cousins uh, with the Minnesota Vikings in the past. Um, so just literally just from basic fundamentals, um, getting all the way up to advanced reads and um, you know things like coverages and reading recognition, things like that. So all the way up, all the way from the basics, from the from the from one hundred and one football, all the way up to the really advanced. And how much of that came from the stuff you learned from your dad and from your brother and how much of it came from what you learned when you were at Florida and how, you know, I mean, I'm sure you take little pieces of everything you learn to, a, right. to put that together. Yeah. It, you know, it, it's really all formed for the individual. And that's one thing I learned from, from a lot of coaches. And one thing that my dad uh, used to do with me and my brother growing up was we went to seven or eight college camps a year. And mm -hmm. I did that from when I was from the, in the sixth grade. So I, I learned that along at a very, really, really early age that there are different ways and different philosophies to teach quarterbacks. So um, all those lessons that I got from all, all those years, you know, they, they come in play now for when I have an individual based on whether they're tall, short, fast, um, 
not not so fast, you know. So can they can are they a great thrower? Are they a great are they a great passer? Do they are they not as accurate? So it's it it all works and there's different drills, different tactics now that I can use that I learned back then that I can use to help um kids who are playing the quarterback position now. Yeah, I'm sure you can still spin it, right? Yeah, I, I can't get the uh, the, revolu the revolutions on the ball like I did when I was playing, but I can still spin it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but you used to tell me stories about who you and your brother, uh, CJ, would have like competitions who could spin it the most. On yeah. Pass, and and uh, and it just made you be, be that more much more accurate. Yeah, my dad, you know, he was who developed us, our skill development as quarterbacks throughout our obviously our younger years and through mid youth middle school and high school he was you know smart uh genius beyond his years as far as understanding how to get us to develop things in ways that we didn't really subconsciously that we really didn't even realize we were doing at the time and us, us under us trying to spin the ball as many times as possible within 10 yards and 15 yards 20 yards so and so forth um, he got us to under, he got us to where we could control the football. That's why coaches love quarterbacks. I can spin the ball because it shows a level of control over the ball, right. which equals to being more accurate, right? Especially on throws down the field. Yeah, I mean, and of course, you came here uh, from Charlotte and uh, to play for Ron Zook, and Ron Zook, I mean, recruited the hell out of you. And the letter okay. I, you showed me, the letter he sent you, and the plan he had for you. Uh, and then you're here a couple of years, and guess what? They got a new coach. <laughs> coach inspired. <laughs> that had to have been kind of a culture shock for you as a young guy who was kind of reserved a little bit, was trying to figure out what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. and, and you're one of the highest ranked, uh, you know, uh, quarterbacks in the, in the in high school football. It set all these records. It, it had to have been a little weird for you. Yeah, it was. Um, I mean, to be, I mean, my story really can't be told, as you know, without Ron Zook. And yeah. and that whole staff, Ed Zombreaker, Larry Fedor. I mean, it was that whole staff was was a huge part of my development, especially early on. Um, the fact that I was able to win SEC Freshman of the Year had a big part in doing with how I was developed. The plan that Ron Zook had for me, uh, Ed Zombreaker, that they put forth for me um, to grow as a freshman, game after game, week after week. I mean, it was huge for my development. Um, the success that. We had offensively uh, the next, the following year where we led the SEC in offense. Um, all that was, you know, accredited to their development plan. And so to take to take where we were and where we were going, and then just kind of have to kind of switch it, you know, because you have a new staff coming in. And yes, it's de it was definitely difficult to uh, make those changes. And um, you know, but my one thing that my dad always taught me and my brother is that we have to be willing to be able to adapt to different offenses, different philosophies of coaches. And that's one thing about going to all those different camps um, throughout throughout summer, throughout the summer as we were growing up, helped to help me do during my transition with Urban Meyer. Yeah, you know, we just had Ron, well, actually we had both Ron and Urban in different times at the quarterback club speaking. So that was great oh, to wow. get their perspectives on everything. And uh, obviously uh, – You've seen the Swamp Kings video. I don't know why you were barely mentioned in it. I'm still trying to figure out that. I got more publicity than you did out of that thing. I, I funny, funny thing. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, oh. and, and from the old, and from the old way, I, I don't have Netflix, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, I still gotta I still gotta go and uh, watch it. But um, a lot of my teammates are in, like Brandon Siler, who I'm really close with um, here in Orlando. You know, he, he's I know he was in it. And he's told me about how he experienced it, and uh, so a lot of guys have come have called me up and uh, told me. Even Cam Newton himself, who uh, you know was talking to me about it. So it's uh, it's it's to me, it's just uh, really fun to kind of build, bring that back, that nostalgia of how Gator football and the development and all that, all those things. That was uh, so. I'm sure a lot of guys. Who almost who kind of were always in the background, who who got a chance to kind of see themselves out out there and see kind of the the development of what what you kind of what we kind of went through. I don't know if Urban gets away with all that stuff now. The way oh. he was back then, <laughs> yeah. drills and everything. 
Yeah. I don't know if he gets away with all that. Now. Yeah, diff different different tactics they got used now, right? To to develop uh, players. So yeah, it, it's it's tough. It's tough now, as you know, to develop toughness in in a yeah. program. It's I mean, outside of outside of what you do in the weight room, you can't really do too much. You know, so it's it's uh it's a lot tougher now than I think it was back then when we when I when I played. Do you ever think about what you could have made on NIL? I mean, to start oh my gosh. at the University uh, of Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I tried not to think about it. Yeah, I mean, I was—I mean, being the number one player in the country coming out, um, having over 50, 50 some some odd schools, you know, for scholarship, you know, be able to go to. So I, uh, you know, I, I probably could have been able to take care of my mom and dad a lot more, and you know, being able to do things. Um, you know, being able to do things financially that that'll probably be still with me today. So it's yes, it's a great advantage I think that players have today. That um, even guys, I think about guys back in the '90s as well. I mean, when they came out, so it's uh, yeah. the Ronald Curry's of the of the of the world. Uh, who was Ronald Curry was number one player in football and basketball. Yeah, I mean, I can imagine. I can't imagine what he would have got in IL deal. He would have gotten so stuff like that. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm happy to see players being able to take advantage of it now. Yeah, and I, I was going to ask you this because uh, you know we would your your uh, so, senior year when obviously when when uh, Tebow comes in and he comes in for some plays and everything and I mean you talked about it before he, they booed when you ran back out on the field which was crazy and I'm like your starting quarterback is running on the field <laughs> stop well, I don't know what's wrong with you but they oh we were booing the coach's decision and all that I, he doesn't know that. Um, but how did you and Tim get along? Because I know that you guys were in the meeting rooms all the time, and he is such a different uh, personality than anybody I know. And and you're you're very mild mannered as a rule. You know, you and I get along great. But you know, Tim is so rah rah and everything. I mean, how did you guys get along? Uh, because there had to be some friction there. No, uh, I mean, the, the, I guess what what was perceived outside never happened inside. Tim was. I, I had a chance to get to know Tim when he was 18 right so it was tim was a different tim evolved into you know maturity wise all those things as he grew just like i did during my time at, at florida and i got a chance to know tim early on he was an early spring and rolly um you know little things like little things like uh when tim first got there he didn't hold the laces of the football so that's one thing that you know, a little, a little thing that I said, well, try holding the laces every time you throw. And, you know, his, and his throwing got better just like that. So really? it's little things like that, that um, like that, I little stories like that, that me and Tim have that, you know, we go back and we can, you know, those are those are little things that you help. You help the younger generation grow, um, which I it, it was tough for me because I always had a different backup every year. And Tim right. was the, Tim was the one backup that I knew that was going to be there that I could really helping, you know, and uh, plant, plant a seed and just and try to help as he grew and um, obviously he had an awesome career. I'm trying to think who they were. Engel Martin. Was Engel Gavin, Martin, was Gavin uh, Dickey ever your backup? Gavin Dickey, uh, <laughs> Josh Portis, and then it was Tim. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Portis, what a, you know, I, I don't know if you knew his mom at all, but she would call us all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and after he left and went to Maryland, she called us to tell us he was going there. And we and Robbie and I were on the phone with her because we were we were just gotten done with sign day. And we said, we don't care anymore. OK, we don't, <laughs> what he's doing is up to him. We you're a very nice person, but we don't right. care. about Josh, anymore. I, I, I tell you what, I tell you what, that that kid was talented, man. Oh, he was, was, great. He was yeah. one of the most, you know, everybody can. Talk about the. I mean, they they look at that. They look at that offense and who it was built for. It was built for Josh Portis. I mean, yeah. Josh Portis was he was a perfect build for what they wanted to do in that offense. So it's uh, it was it, it was. I thought I really thought he had a really good chance of uh, having a lot of success. Well, let's go back to uh, 06 and then then we'll play our little game. Yes, nowhere maybe with Chris Leak. Uh, you know, Chris, that uh, what a night that was, and and for things to go that smooth. And I don't think there – I think there are a lot of quarterbacks that would have had a problem with it, not handling the the calmness and staying calm after that opening kickoff to run back for a touchdown. Right. But you were able to, hey, let's go down, score, just keep scoring every time. Yeah. It, i tell you what. It I learned um, demeanor, how 
to have a certain demeanor on the sideline, a, a certain focus, a certain uh, to be how to be more stoic and to be focused on it, to be in the moment. I actually learned that from uh, the Masters. I watched for the this is the first time I ever watched like a golf tournament. Was the Masters when uh, Tiger won back in two thousand? I think it was five. And I saw his demeanor during the entire round. And, you know, you know, the masses, there's people all over the place is cheering and his, the way he like just stayed even keel. I really admired that about him. And so that was something that I wanted to take and put into my game, you know, just watching the, watching the guy who all the expectations, all the standards that he has of playing and he's at the top of his game at the time. And, um, you know, that was something I wanted to put in my game. So I so I had a different level of focus every time, no matter what happened. So whether it was a touchdown, interception, turnover, whatever, uh, I wanted to have the same amount of focus, same amount, same that same because I knew my teammates were watching my reactions as well to uh, to certain things, especially during adversity. So um, I think me bringing a, a little calmness to the equation of a game that's so full of excitement and, and energy and emotions um, really helped us kind of stay even keel and stay focused on definitely during the games. Of course, Chris Leak, the all-time leading passer at Florida, and I don't think that record's going to get broken very soon. But, uh, <laughs> I, but I, 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 with, I, the, I, with the transfers, it's tough. It, It'll be tough. Yeah, I know. I mean, <laughs> it's so funny to watch these guys and like, this guy, oh, he's transferring again. Backup quarterback in the college football playoff. No, I'm out of here. I don't. Yeah, it's tough. They need me, but it's okay. But it's just the way it works. But anyway, it is what it is. All right, we play this game called Yes, No Way, or Maybe You Answer Three Questions. It is brought to you by Big Mills Cheese Steak Street Dining Done the Right Way. And if you go there and you say, hey, I listened to that interview with Pat Dooley and Chris Leak on another Dooley Noted podcast you get free fries with your order. Okay, number one, yes, no way, or maybe the MVP trophy from the 06 championship game is on your mantle. No way. <laughs> okay. I, get, I gave all my – I gave every single MVP trophy, player of the game, player of the year, all that stuff is my is on my, my parents' mantles at home. Is it? So, yeah. Well, that's good. And obviously, yeah. they did a lot for you too. Yeah, right? yeah. So it was it was something to give my dad, and uh, you know, like that dad, and my mom to kind of see all the sacrifices that they made and time that they put in. You know, it's something that they can see that they it was something that that they can cherish. You know, as they walk yeah. every time they walk into the room, it's something that they their time and energy that they put into that really uh, is a thank you for them. And I've been to that house. I just it, there weren't all those trophies there then because you <laughs> about to really start accumulating. Well, they, they, he's, run, he's he's ran out of space. He's told me now, so he's he's kind of he's put them all up and uh, <laughs> all the high, especially all the stuff in high school. Yeah, it, it's 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 taking That's up awesome. a lot of the room because my brother's stuff is in there too, who was pretty darn good. So <laughs> how is Curtis doing now? I know he had a little bit of a, a health problem. He's, better, he's much better. You know, my dad. My dad is is a. He's uh he's in, so he's in his seventies now, so he's but he's he runs every day. So he loves to run. You know he's he's always been that way ever since I was a, I was a kid. He used to get up at five six a.m. and go running. So he's back he's back to his normal routine now. Well, good. Uh, tell him I said hello. Um, and and you know turning seventy is not the worst thing in the world since I do it next year. So <laughs> we're all getting old here, Chris. That's, that's right. Uh, all right, uh, number two on yes, no way, or maybe. Oh, Percy Harvin is the best player you ever played with. Ooh, yes, I have to say yes. It's it, he's the best I ever saw. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I've seen There's some I, great I, ones there. Yeah, yeah, that's a, it's been good. One. I mean, if you're talking Florida, yeah, I mean, that's I don't know, I, I don't know a player that could just play like him, any position. I mean, if he wanted to play quarterback, he could do it. <laughs> you know, if he wanted to play safety, defensive back, he could do it. You know, he was – and people don't realize how strong Percy was. Percy was yeah. was in the weight room. He was massively strong for a guy. Uh, he, he was incredible. Yeah, I mean, he was unbelievable. He struck guys off like, like yeah. they were there. Yeah. Uh, he, he was amazing. Awesome. Dykes awesome. and I were talking about it the other day. He said, best player I ever played with. Yeah. Him. And he played with Brady. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was, he was, he was, people, he was that good. I tell you what. 
All right. Uh, my third question had to do with Swamp Kings. And since you haven't seen it, I guess I can't answer. Ask it. <laughs> but, uh, but I did. Well, I will make it about this. Uh, Graham Mertz, I wanted to get your take on how he played this year. And I know you're like every Gator fan, everybody, every Gator alum. You, you're surprised at how the program is struggling right now. And it, we'll see how it goes going forward. But I thought he played really well this year. Yeah. I mean, the, his, I mean, I, I, I look at, I'm a big stat guy. So, and, and I look at, I look at statistics and see how how efficient he was. Um, when you have a quarterback that efficient, I think it's just a matter of time before you get everything else kind of uh, begins to catch up with him and his efficiency. So defensively, you get the you get the, a certain personnel, and when you have a quarterback that efficient, completion percentage. I mean, where you know that for the most part, when he gets in the game, he's going to protect the football. Number one. And you have a really good chance every single drive to score, to score points. Doesn't mean they're all going to be touchdowns, but he's going to drive the ball downfield. You're either going to get a field goal, a touchdown, or you go, you'll be in really good position to punt and put your defense in good position. So I think that's from a from a coaching perspective, that's really important to have. That's a really um, good thing to have from a, especially when you when you're looking at veteran. Not many teams have quarterbacks that are that efficient anymore. So. Right. I, I think he had a really good year. I mean, as efficient as he was. Yeah, I mentioned this to people. I said, you know, uh, Mertz and Lagway could be the next leak Tebow. You know, maybe another combination like that where you have one guy's playing most of the snaps, but another guy comes in to, to run certain plays. You know. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if that is in Napier's background. You know, not, I, not I'm, really, yeah. I'm a big, I'm a bigger, I'm a bigger guy of having one guy. You know, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a proponent of pick your guy and and he's he's the guy that you rally behind right so that's that's kind of always been my philosophy um the the backups the backup he he's he's prepared just like the starter um when it's when there's time when there's moments that he needs to come in and play he comes in and plays but i've, I've always been a big proponent of you know there's a starter and there's a backup because it it, it really helps the team rally behind a guy especially especially when the games are become sure. being on the line yeah i mean you gotta have a leader i mean that's yeah. you have somebody to take you out there chris it's always great talking to you man uh thanks so much for joining us on this on our podcast and uh right behind me if you if you see there's the oh, yeah. yeah i i, I better, believe, better believe it <laughs> get, believe get it. <laughs> uh, and actually over to the uh to the right you can't see well maybe you can see it there is the uh that was the uh, thing that that was in the um, press box from the 06 National Championship. Ah, game. okay. I said, "What are you guys doing with this when you're when uh, when the games are?" And they go, "Oh, we're throwing it away." I go, "Let me take it." <laughs> get home. I, I got, somehow got it back. Nice. To, that's a long story. I'm from Phoenix. Nice. What a night that was. Absolutely. Yeah, I was. I was. People always come to me and tell me um, how much they enjoyed the week, and I, yeah. I wish I was. I, a part of me wish I was like. Outside of outside of being a player, that I could just kind of enjoy the festivities and everything. Because people tell me they had my parents just tell me they had an awesome time in Arizona that week. Yeah, so I'm, I'm glad was, everybody had a good had a good yeah, time. It was we ended it off with the bang, so with, with the win. So. <laughs> exactly. Well, and that's the thing. Nobody would have had a good time <laughs> if you guys didn't win the game. So yeah. <laughs> you you contributed to their great time. Yeah. no doubt about yeah, it. That's fun. Chris, always great talking to you, buddy. We'll see you down the road, okay? All right, Pat. Thank All right, we'll be, we'll be back with more of another Duly Noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Meldon Law Duly Dome Gator Studios right after this break. Hello there, everybody. I'm Pat Duly, of course, from another Duly Noted podcast. And this is a great Adam Brewer, and he's just opened up a place here, Adam Brewer to go. Uh, what would give me the idea to do this, to have a to-go place? Uh, we really like the fast concept you know, being able to get the barbecue. Uh, now we have this new online ordering. So we, before it was a call ahead, carry out, quick service. Um, we have like a curbside kind of a deal where, um, you know, you're, you're, everything's ready to go for you. Um, and then we thought, wow, we have a really great dine-in concept, but uh, how can we make this you know, streamlined for the customer and make it easy and accessible uh, for all parts of town? Adam's Rib Code to go. Come on down and enjoy it. 
great food, great atmosphere, a diverse menu, everything made from scratch, plenty of space, and locally owned. These are all the characteristics of a great restaurant. And you can find each and every one of them right here in Gainesville at Ballyhoo Grill. Ballyhoo Grill prepares all of their food fresh every day from their salad dressing to their award-winning soups. Bring your family and enjoy dinner under the Tim Trebo Tiki Hut while listening to live music. Or if you're running low on time to eat out, they also deliver through Uber Eats, Fight Squad, and Postmates. A Gainesville staple that's been open for over 30 years. Check out Ballyhoo Grill on Facebook or at BallyhooGrill.com. Another duly noted podcast comes to you from the Coach's Podcast Room at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill and Celebration Point. You can watch and listen to us on Facebook and YouTube for every podcast that we do on Mondays and Fridays at 2 o'clock. Listen to the podcast whenever on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Overcast, any of the other 39 platforms where you can find this podcast or your favorite podcast. Remember to like, follow, and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below or call me if you want to do some advertising at 352-317-3444. Hi, welcome back to another Duly Noted Podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Melden Law Duly Dome Gator Studios. Appreciate our friends at Titan. Appreciate our friends at Melden Law. We appreciate all of our great sponsors. And uh, we, we again, like I I. I will keep saying this until we fill these sponsors. We got a couple little openings if you want to get involved. It's really not that expensive. It's a bargain, I think. Um, if you want to get involved in it, uh, we'll be happy to accommodate you. So let's uh, go to our Hesser and Kipke three things. You know, I was just thinking I had, I was telling a story on during when Chris was on, and now I can't remember it. Because I was going to use it in my Pat Dooley story time, but I already had one down. All right, forget it. You guys don't need to hear about the production of this show. You know Zach's doing a great job, and I'm doing a terrible job. I, I get it. I understand that. All right, let's get to our Hesser and Kipke three things. And, of course, Hesser and Kipke is a Gainesville law firm specializing in the areas of workers' compensation and family law. Ken and Jennifer take great pride in their one-to-one -one focus on each and every client they represent. Ken is board certified in workers' compensation law by the Florida Bar, while Jennifer possesses extensive jury trial experience with a nearly 20-year background as a prosecutor. If you don't believe me, check out their five-star Google reviews. Google, Google, is that the way you say it? Google? Your, their five-star Google reviews. Set an appointment at hklawfl.com, or better yet, give them a call at 352-339-9920. Hesser and Kipke. Da -da. All right, let's get to the three things. Uh, let's start off with the uh, last night in basketball. And I don't, I didn't, wasn't watching. I, I have watched, I gotta say, I've been watching a little more NBA than I normally would. Not because of that in tournament deal that they did, which I still don't understand what it was about, but because I just, sometimes there's nothing else on and I'm lazy. Uh, but so last night, Giannis throws 64 down, and uh, but they had a little incident after the game because, and this is funny, Giannis wanted the ball. When you score 64 points, you should be able to take the ball, first of all. Second of all, it was also the night Oscar Schwiebway. Remember Oscar Schwiebway? Of course, he was just played last year for Kentucky. Uh, I really liked Oscar as a player. He scored his first points ever in an NBA game last night. So he wanted a ball too. They had two game balls. It should have been resolved. Rick Carlisle even saying it's kind of stupid that this happened, but it turned into a big scuffle. Um, you score 64 and you're seven foot two and you got really long arms. And I wouldn't fight with you. No, I wouldn't mess with you. Of course, Oscar Schwebway could hold his own. I, but it wasn't between them. It was other guys that were involved in this thing. Anyway, Oscar Schwebway has NBA points now. So there you have it. And that, it's interesting with him because I loved him as a college player. But his last year, he wasn't the same guy. And I don't know if it was a knee. But I always wonder whether he'd be a good NBA player just because – Sometimes when you're like like he's a six eight center back to the basket center and those guys you know don't always pan out uh, anyway that's neither here nor there number two 
on Hester and Kipke, three things. Um, breaking news story that happened yesterday um, was the NCAA, a judge decided he is going to put a kibosh on people trying to stop people from transferring multiple times. And so he's it's a 14-day order, and it could be um, appealed and knocked out, or it could end up not end up going through. But for right now, if you transfer from one school to another, but they said you have to sit out, you can go ahead and play now. You can play for four, 14 days. However, the NCAA has already said, we're not going to count this against you if, if you want to do it. And I think the NCAA is just basically throwing their hands up and going, everybody do whatever you want. Just do it. You guys, if it makes the game more interesting, everybody should be playing as many years as you want. I think that's where they are now. Uh, they're not saying it, but I think that's where it is. And it's fine with me. I was, I talked about Severe Wheeler the other day. Uh, Severe Wheeler is playing for Washington, which I didn't even know. He had a big game the other night. Of course he did. He's a good player. He's played eight years. You know, uh, JT Daniels played forever. Uh, I think he played eight years. And now he's out of football. Um, so anyway, it, it is. And that's fine. I got no problem with it. The days of us knowing how long a guy was going to be at a school are gone. They're done. It is a year-to-year -year operation. That's all it is. And it is what it is. Accept it or don't. I'm kind of on the border right now. I don't know how much longer I can take up some of this. All right, and finally on Hester and Kipke's three things, um, Troy Vincent and Roger Goodell addressed the media yesterday talking about officiating Troy Vincent said something interesting. It's a work in progress. And I'm like, yeah, it's been a work in progress since the game was invented. And it will always be a work in progress because people make mistakes. They do. Um, and, uh, you know, they just make they make mistakes in, in officiating. It's hard. I can't, I'll can't. i watch a game and I'll go, well, that's holding. I can't believe they missed that. Or that's uh, past interference or that's this. I can't believe they missed that. And then they show the replay and you went, oh, it really wasn't. Or the vice versa. So every play, something happens, it's probably a penalty. And every play you don't want called or you lose your mind. But when it's not called for your team, you get mad. I just, I think this is something you can let go. It's not going to really, I don't know how to make it better. You can't bring in robot robotic uh, umpires the way I know people do in baseball. Yeah, I, I'm fine with that too. But you can't do it in football. First of all, you get destroyed, right? Um, so anyway, we'll see where that goes. All right, that is our Hesser and Kipke three things. Let's get to our Leonardo's and Millopper quick picks because today we are going to make a poll of a winner, and that winner will win a $25 gift certificate at Leonardo's plus a copy of my book, signed or not signed. That person needs to let me know which one they want. Uh, you know how to get a hold of me. It's not hard at all. Uh, Patrick Dooley, 54, at Gville, or not, not Gville Sun. It's been a while since it was Gville Sun. No, it's at uh, gmail.com. And uh, so, Zach, I need you to pull a number between 49 and 110. We had a lot of people get in this, this week. 86. Let me look here. You said 86? Okay, uh, the winner is, oh, we got a woman who won. Very good. Joan Rojero is her name. And Joan is the winner of this week's or this month's contest, whatever you want to say it. Hey, we do it every three weeks. Rojero is a very St. Augustine name. I wonder if she's, I guess I'll find out when she emails me. But Joan Rojero is the winner of our contest. And we'll go ahead and give you a qualifier, guys, so you can get going on the next one. Uh, Jacksonville State, Louisiana. Go ahead and do that game. That's a Saturday game. Pick a winner there, and that'll get the qualifying started again. And you know that uh, in the next three weeks or so, we'll pick another winner and be happy to do it. Let's get to our Adams Ribco to go Gator of the Week. Uh, looking forward to seeing the Gator of the Weekend is going to be because technically the Thursday night basketball game will count as a weekend. So it could be somebody from that. could be somebody from elsewhere. Um, and I, I – I, Today, it's going to be 
a couple of Hall of Famers, three Hall of Famers to be exact. Now they're not, they didn't go into the Florida Hall of Fame, although I think all three of them are there. Um, they didn't go into the college football hall of fame, but they went into hall of fames. They're still, they can increase their lead on me. But my goal is never to get into a hall of fame because I wouldn't be a member of a club that would have me. Right. But God, you would think somebody would just anyway, but Chris Collinsworth. Now, again, this became official yesterday when he was inducted, we knew this was coming and it had been released, but it went into the, uh, uh, Sports Broadcasting Hall of Fame, certainly deservingly so. Uh, great guy. He was another guy that was in that video we just talked about. Collinsworth, Palmer, Tebow at the end of it. It's great. Talking about the school out west. Uh, so he went into the Sports Broadcasting Hall of Fame. Jeremy Foley and Danny Werfel both go into the Sugar Bowl Hall of Fame. So um, good, good for all those guys to go into more Hall of Fames. Means you get to go to a dinner and get a plaque, I guess, you know. I wouldn't know. I'm just kidding, guys. They, they, no, somebody's gonna take this serious. You're about duly lobbying to get into a Hall of Fame. I'm not lobbying, I'm lobbying not to get into a Hall of Fame. All right, let's speaking of lobbying, let's go to a place that has the lobby. Well, kind of has a lobby. And that is a swamp restaurant. You know it well. They've got all kinds of great specials going on. I know they just had one for Taylor Swift's birthday. Tay Tay's birthday. I saw that on on uh, online, and they have them all kinds of specials all weekend. Specials on sangria, specials on beer. Place to be to watch all these great games. So let's talk about the great games. And it's going to be hard to get through them all. There's so many games I can't even mention them all because you've got the overlap of bowl season and college basketball cranking up, and the NFL going on. There are a million games, but of course tonight. Uh, Florida basketball, that game is on the SEC Network at 7 o'clock. Um, Saturday, you have three NFL games. So none of them are that great. But the bowl games aren't that great either, to be honest with you. So Saturday is a day where you kind of want it on in the background. Um, the uh, Sunday, the best game, the NFL game, is the uh, – Dallas Buffalo game. That's four twenty-five on Fox is what time that game is. And then uh, out of the bowl games, I, I on Saturday there's seven of them, seven bowl games. Uh, UCLA Boise is probably the one. The LA Bowl probably the one you want to watch. I don't know. There aren't that many great games. Uh, there are some great basketball games. Oh, I want to get to that. A and M at Houston. That's a good game. Two thirty on ESPN. Uh, you also have North Carolina, Kentucky, 530 on CBS. And then um, I was watching, oh, Arizona and Purdue. I'm like, oh, that's a game I got to watch. One versus three. Now, I know a lot of you guys are like, rankings don't matter. Eh, okay, one versus three are playing. I'm going to watch it. I've watched a lot of Purdue basketball this year, to be honest. It said 430, except it's on the Peacock. Now, I think we get the Peacock. We get everything, but a lot of you don't, and I, I, I feel your pain. You, so that's why you go to the Swamp and see if they can get the game. First call Ryan and make sure you can get the game before you do that. But he, he, anyway, either way, go. Go to the Swamp, have a good time, and you can watch all kinds of sports. This is a great sports watching weekend, no doubt about it. All right, let us get to this, that, and the other which we bring to you every Friday or every Thursday. I'm sorry. We used to bring it to you on Fridays. Now we bring it to you on Thursdays. It is brought to you by Ballyhoo Grill. Our good friends over there was just over there the other day. Had a great time, man. Blast. Too much fun. Um, and, of course, by uh, about, I, I mentioned Ballyhoo Grill. It's brought to you also by Ironwood Golf Course and by Dar Shackow Insurance. For all your insurance needs, go to Dar Shackow and hit them up. So. The this um, the kickoff in in the NFL became an issue. They were trying to get look at player safety. So what did they do? They said, "Let's do what colleges have decided to start doing, which is let you fair catch a kickoff." Yeah, that's the ticket. We'll do that. That was the this. So this year you could fair catch a kickoff. You could do it before in college, but they adapt like they always do. The NFL 
doesn't have any rules on their own. They they adapt USFL, XFL, college rules. They never there's not a lot of people thinking outside the box. <laughs> well, anyway, the that is that um yesterday in that teleconference I was telling you about, uh Troy Vincent said, Oh, that deal's dead. We're not doing that anymore. That's stupid. It's the dumbest non-play we can have. It's we're we're trying to but the problem is, we go to the other. The problem is, nobody knows what to do. They don't have an answer for it. And that, that's the problem. There is no good answer to the kickoff rule. And the kickoff rule, if the kickoff rule is simply, you kick it off and you either run it back or you don't. That's a, If you want a fair catch, it's such a non-play, I agree. It's not real exciting. It's not the kind of thing you're trying to make your brand look like, especially if you go to commercial after a fair catch. Um, but there is, I don't know that there is an answer. If you take the kickoff completely out of it, now you've taken the onside kickoff out of it. So you can't surprise a team with an onside kick. Or you can't say, well, I, we want onside kick it here. Okay, uh, well, I guess we'll let you do it for this one play. There is no really good answer, and I think that's part of the problem. It may be an unsolvable problem. Or you could just take the onside kick out and go, tough. That may be the answer. That is this, that, and the other, invented by Steve Spurrier and made great by me. That's the way I say it. Because I all these other people keep t stealing this, this, that, and the other. Right? That's all I know. I'm not going to say who. All right, let us um, get to our final, F, uh, our final thing today, as it always is. And that is our Pat Dooley story time brought to you by Eastlake Pediatrics. And the great folks over there, Mike Jordan. Uh, so I'm, I, what was the story I was going to tell about? It had to do with Chris Leak, but I can't think of it. I'll, I'm sure I'll think of it between now and ne the next show, and I'll be able to tell it. Instead, I'll tell the story I was going to tell, which is a story I think I've told you guys before, but I, when I was thinking about it today, and that was the year that Florida didn't play in a bowl game. and. It, it never happened. Now, again, they hadn't played in bowl games before in their history, but not when I was covering the team. They always were in a bowl game. They always had a, a, a somewhere for us to go for a week and have fun and stay in a nice hotel and everything. I hated it. So I called the commissioner. I said, you know, I know every year you go to all three games in the state of Florida on New Year's Day. Can I go? He said, well, you have to get to Jacksonville and you have to get home from Tampa. And my wife said, I'm in. I'll drive you. So my wife drove me to Jacksonville. Went to the Gator Bowl game for a quarter there. Talked to Aaron Murray for a while. Saw my brother there. Get on a, get on a, a uh, get in a car. They take us to the airport, which is so far away. And it was pouring rain. I'm like, maybe this wasn't a great idea. Then we get on the plane. I'm on a private plane, right? I'm so excited. It was tiny. It was like a plane you get on to go a half an hour away, which basically the flight was less than a half an hour. Because from there, from Jacksonville, we go to Orlando, and then we went to uh, Tampa. Again, took a plane from Orlando to Tampa. Sometimes I think I look back and I go, I was so lucky that I was allowed to do that. And I had a blast doing it. I just missed going to a bowl game. Now it almost seems like commonplace. Like, eh. Bowl games? Schmoll games. Who needs them? Well, hopefully, they'll come back. And I don't think the commissioners let me drive a ride with him to all these games. Plus, he's probably got a nicer plane now. All right, that's going to do it for another Duly Noted podcast. We appreciate all of our great sponsors, and we certainly appreciate Zach for being back in studio and uh, taking care of us and um, doing a great job of producing. We'll be back, as I said, Monday. Coach Spurrier will be back with us. And then Thursday, Drew Copeland. Appreciate Chris Leak so much for coming on today. I know he's busy, but uh, that was great to talk to him. I think our interviews over the last few weeks have been out of this world, not because of me, but because of the guests we've been able to get and, and how great they've been and how open they've been about talking about things. So it, it's been a lot of fun. All right. That's going to do it for our show. Until Monday, I am Pat Dooley. I am deep. I am way back. 
and I am out of here.